This is the Norris Group's Real Estate Investor Radio Show, the award-winning show dedicated to thought leaders shaping the real estate industry and local experts revealing their insider tips to succeed in an ever-changing real estate market. Hosted by author, investor, and hard money lender, Bruce Norris. On Friday, October 21st, the Norris Group proudly presented its ninth annual award-winning black tie event, I Survived Real Estate. An incredible lineup of industry experts joined Bruce Norris to discuss perplexing industry trends, head-scratching legislation, and opportunities emerging for real estate professionals. Proceeds from the event benefited Make-A-Wish and St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. This event would not have been possible without the generous help of the following platinum partners. Housing Wire, Property Radar, the Apartment Owners Association, the San Diego Creative Real Estate Investors Association, Invest Club for Women, MVT Productions, the San Jose Real Estate Investors Association, Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club, Think Realty, and White House Catering. Visit isurvivedrealestate.com for event information and tickets. In hope, strength, and joy, it gave the same to his mom and dad. And now, as we continue to tell stories about the day, we know it even extends much farther beyond that. It extends to the limo driver who delivered a VIP to an entrance rivaling that of a Hollywood premiere. It extends to the crowd of volunteers lining the red carpet, holding signs and cheering Finn on like the rock star that he is. And it extends to every employee and shopper in the mall that day who helped a little boy become what he dreamed of most, the coolest kid in town. It wasn't just a wish for that one kid or that one family. Finn's wish left us all feeling hope, strength, and joy. That's the power of Make-A-Wish. This year, our local chapter serving Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties will grant 357 wishes for kids like Finn. That's one wish about every 25 hours. We will also assist with over 600 wishes for kids who visit us from all over the world, right here in our own territory, to see sites like Disneyland or meet their favorite celebrity. Unfortunately, according to the Centers for Disease Control, we are still only reaching about half of the eligible children in our area. But thanks to your support here tonight, you'll help us reach our goal to make sure that every eligible child facing a life-threatening medical condition will have their opportunity to have their one truest wish granted, just like Finn's. On behalf of everyone at Make-A-Wish, our staff, volunteers, and our board of directors, and most importantly, our Wish Kids, I thank each and every one of you here tonight, and especially our incredible friends at the Norris Group for your support. I hope you had the opportunity in the lobby tonight to see our Adopt-A-Wish plaque representing this year's uh, wish that the Norris Group has adopted. It is for 16-year-old Morgan's wish uh, to visit Japan, Um, and we're very proud to present that to Aaron, even though he won't let me do it on stage here tonight. (laughs) With friends like you, we know that we can turn life-threatening medical illnesses into life-affirming triumphs. Thank you so much for being here. I always felt uncomfortable accepting the plaque if you've been here before because it's just as much yours as ours. So it's out out front. Um, Please take a picture with it. Uh, Share it on Facebook. Um, Just thank you. So our incredible sponsors, they've been incredible partners through all this. It takes a lot of uh, coordinating. Make-A-Wish Sarah has been on the front end answering a lot of your questions, sponsors on seating. So if we can give her a special round of applause. One more round of applause. I don't know if they're all in the room. Uh, we've got Vicki, Robin, Rhonda, and Rich have been behind me the entire time over the last six months putting this together. There's 400 of you in the audience and some VIPs in the room, and they really help make us make this possible. So if we can give them a round of applause, that'd be awesome. Well, the rough part for me is done. I get to hand over the mic. If you could take a moment to silence your cell phones, the si- cell phone that went over the- here, you just went off a little bit too early uh, for that uh, <laughs> announcement. Turn it on feel good mode, vibrate please. You feel free to take pictures throughout the night. Uh, if you're on social media, use hashtag ISRE. Yes, you can. And this week is Bosses Week. If you didn't remember, I think there's a five day grace period, so Hallmark says. 
Take your phone out real quick. I, I have a great boss who allows us to host this event, and it means a lot to us and our family. And we've had a cancer in our family, and a lot of you share personally. This night gets a little bit raw because some of you talk to me, and it's just it's become very special. This is our ninth year. Next year will be 10. The Norris Group is celebrating 20 years in, I think, January or February. <laughs> yeah. So I get to work with a guy who's been in the business for over 30 years as an investor, hard money lender, a builder. Uh, he hosts our award-winning radio show. He spends a lot of his time doing things that none of us would like to do, like highlight congressional bills and bailouts and research his economic trends. I get to call him Pops, Bruce Norris. Thank you, buddy. Fun. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I want you to know that this, uh, this is Aaron's brainchild. He came to me about nine years ago and said, could we do something for charity? And I thought, that sounds <clears throat> like a great idea, but that's, that's right up his alley, and that's, uh, that's how we got started. It's been my privilege to be the owner of the Norris Group for 20 years, and Thank you for a standing ovation. I share that with, with them because I, I think that maybe we're touching a chord in our industry, and it, it means a lot to me to have a lot of all the original people that came to the company 20 years ago still there and see uh, maybe what's, what's gone on. So I thank you very much for, for welcoming my company in the way that you have. It's, uh, it's been an honor to be connected and that we have so many friends here now. This has gone way beyond the business relationship in, in many ways. I had a very special week this last week. Thursday night in Florida, I got to eat dinner with John Schaub. On Saturday, I got to teach all day with Peter Fortunato. That was a pretty cool experience. Then um, went into Washington, D.C. and with Tom Wilson at the invite of Doug Duncan, we met with Fannie Mae to try to talk about expanding investor financing. That's a, that's a pretty good week. All of that would not have happened except for I attended something in 1980 in December. The gentleman named Jim Rohn gave a three-hour talk that I got drugged to, that I was in the front table. I had no choice. I was the only table left. I was told it was three hours long, and I said, that's like six sermons. I don't know how I'm going to put up with that. <laughs> and in about 15 minutes, I took the first note on the top of my page, and it said to my brother who was there, I said, this man doesn't need our money. For some reason, he, he struck a chord with me, and I started writing notes, and I stayed up all night and wrote goals for the first time in my life. The silliest of those goals is someday I'll stand in front of an audience that gives me a standing ovation. <laughs> About three years ago, we created the Roney Award in Jim's honor. We talked to his estate. They allowed us to name this uh, in his honor. And we, we do that because there's people in our industry that we recognize those same qualities, the people that are leaders and that are teachers. Uh, Jack Fullerton was the first recipient of our uh, award, and he was actually the first person that gave me a chance to speak in front of an audience. Our second recipient, Ward Hannigan, and we're going to ask Ward to come up right now, and he's going to introduce the recipient for this year. Ward? <laughs> Let's see if I don't screw this up. Um, Orman Blackwell, better known as Mick Blackwell, was born in Beaumont, Texas, December 20th, 1940. I beat him. I was born in February. He moved to Long Beach, California by the age of three when he started stayed until 
He went into the Air Force in 1959. He was a firefighter for four years and stationed in Topeka, Kansas, San Antonio, Denver, and Morocco. When he was discharged, he moved to Reno, Nevada to help his father run his dad's uh, laundromat and dry cleaner. This is where he met Margie Moore, whom he married in 1964. Margie had a three-year-old daughter, Yolanda, or Yolanda. They moved to Eureka, California in 1964 and soon had a daughter, Dania. He worked as an iron worker until they moved because of the Christmas flood of 1964. They moved back to Long Beach, where he worked for Douglas Aircraft as a maintenance technician, then to Cypress, California, where he wanted to, want, he rented a pasture for a small feedlot, which became one of his passions in his spare time. In 74, he became a pipe fitter for sp fire sprinklers and moved to Chino, California. Some big changes under the Nixon administration changed his, the business of farming and a chance TV commercial featuring a real estate investor cozying up to a Rolls Royce. <laughs> that was probably mine. Peaked, <laughs> peaked mixed interest. He attended the live event with a high school buddy and purchased a book where it was Mark Harrelson's How to Wake Up the Financial Genius Inside You. Max fr Mick's friend poked fun at the purchase uh, which only motivated Mick to read it cover to cover. Soon after, he purchased his first rental, and he hasn't stopped since. I introduce Mike Cantu. Good evening. I met Mick Blackwell back in 1978 when I was 17 years old. That was 38 years ago, and we got off to a rough start. In fact, it's an absolute miracle that we ever became business partners. I worked for a friend of mine who did carpentry work for Mick, and eventually I started working directly for Mick. And early on, after work one day, there was an incident next to the job site that I was 100% responsible for. The next day I showed up to work and Mick was talking to the neighbor man and he called me over and he told me that the plans had changed, that I was going to be rototilling this man's backyard all day without pay. And I said to Mick, I'm really not interested in that. <laughs> and he said, I don't think you have a choice. And as I started walking away, I said, I'm pretty sure I do, and I put some distance between me and Mick, and he said something to me. I turned around and gave him a... <laughs> well, that didn't sit well with Mick because he was headed my way, and so I ran to my car and I jumped in, and it didn't start. <laughs> and I panicked, and the second try it started, I dropped it in low and buried the gas pedal, but the problem was I was in about six inches of rocks and gravel, and the tires just spun. And as I started fishtailing away, I looked in the rearview mirror, and Mick was down on all fours covering himself up as he was getting pelted with rocks and gravel, <laughs> doing a big drifter turn, coming back around for a second pass and getting him again. <laughs> but I didn't want to press my luck, so I drove home unemployed. Shortly after I met him, I was working on one of his construction sites, and my right shoe was coming apart. About the first four inches of the sole was flapping, and Mick noticed that, and he came up to me, and he said, let me see that shoe, and I showed him, showed him my flapping shoe, and he reached in his pocket, and he pulled out a big, fat stack of $100 bills that had a big, fat rubber band around it, and I thought... I think I found Santa Claus. <laughs> and he took a look at my shoe again, and he took the rubber band off and handed it to me. <laughs> said, 
put this on your shoe. I don't want you to fall down and get hurt on my job. I don't want the liability. Mick showed me a whole different world, a world of proper education, followed up by action, and then the results. And I realized that there was a lot to be learned from this man and his thinking. I'd been planning my retirement since fourth grade, and I just knew this man could help me get there. And I've learned a lot from Mick over the years. And early on, he told me there's only two choices. You're either captain of your own ship or a deckhand on someone else's. And Mick has always been a captain, the SS Blackwell. When I first went to work for Mick, he said, we only work half days around here. And I said, I like it already. He said, it doesn't matter if it's the first 12 hours, the last 12 hours, or the 12 hours right out of the middle. We only work half days. And he wasn't kidding. A typical work day, Mick would show up and pick me up as the sun was coming up, and we'd head down to Los Serranos. Mick was a plumber, and we'd do copper repipes. We'd tear out the old plumbing and replace it with copper. Usually, when we were done doing the copper repipes, we would um, head to one of the spec homes that Mick was building, and we would do new copper plumbing until dark. And I also knew that he averaged about $1,000 a day building spec homes. And then we'd head over to his apartments. Mick had 15 fourplexes, and he owned the entire city block of apartments, and quite often would do plumbing into the night. And I later found out that he averaged about $1,000 a day in positive cash flow. So I witnessed firsthand a true entrepreneur in action every single day. And Mick introduced me and many others to the world of positive cash flow by way of creative real estate. And Mick has always been a connector, introducing key people to each other. His influence has had the trickle-down effect, and I'm sure if you connected all the dots, it would look like an Amway presentation. (laughs) I've heard him say many times, do something today for a better tomorrow. And he was always pushing me. Every time I finished a project, he'd look me square in the eyes and ask me, is that the best you can do? When we first partnered up, We had an 80-20 disagreement. We disagreed on 80% of things, but we agreed that it was okay to disagree. And over the years, we've shrank that down to a 50-50 disagreement. We still disagree on half. But that 30% gap we closed was me conceding to the fact that Mick was right. (laughs) And I've gotten a lifetime of good advice from Mick. One key piece of advice he gave me, he said, keep the good stuff. Anytime a good house comes into your world, do what you got to do, tighten your belt a notch, dig your fingernails in, and hang on, but keep the good stuff. And Mick has a great sense of humor. We've shared many great laughs together, but I never had a formal partnership agreement with Mick. We had a flimsy handwritten half-page agreement for our first deal and nothing after that, but never once has Mick had financial amnesia. He's always remembered the terms of the deal, good or bad. He truly is a category of one. I've never met another man like him, and I just can't say enough about the man and the influence he's had on me and many others. And Aaron put together a really nice video on that exact subject, so let's have a look. When I first met Mick back in 1978, I had no idea what an influence he'd become. He taught me to deal with and handle tough times. And because of that, I've been financially free for over 15 years because of knowing, studying, and emulating Mick. I've been a friend of Mick Blackwell for about 15 years or so. In fact, I have lunch with Mick on most Tuesdays. Mick takes his time during this lunch to help all these new people out. In fact, that's what's good about Mick is educating people. I met Mick in 1993 at Jack Fullerton's Orange County meeting. He was generous enough to help me with my first rehab house. We used to have the Tuesday lunches at Sizzler in Upland. And he was so gracious with his time and his knowledge. And it was just incredible. Mick has been so giving of himself. I mean, it's always been about what he can do for other people. Because of you, Mick, I have bought the houses I have now. My husband and I are doing well. I've got that passive income that makes me so happy. And it's all because of you, Mick. You know how much I appreciate you, all your help you give me. 
uh, to start the real estate investor business. The mixed mentorship of myself and more importantly others uh, that have mentored me has given me the freedom to live my life how I want to live. If it wasn't for what Nick had taught others and what those people have taught me, uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Before meeting Mick, I was buying houses, fixing them and selling them. And Mick convinced me to actually keep some or actually almost all as rentals. And that really changed the course of my life. I just wanted to say thank you for all the advice you gave me over the years, um, to telling me to, to hold some of these houses in 2009, 10, and 11 when I was thinking about selling them. He is constantly wanting to give back um, and talking people who have been in the game for a while into giving back to people who are just getting into real estate. He always has been very kind in the sense of giving knowledge to people and also to me. and. Uh, I have learned how to be that way also, and I thank you very much for all these things he's done for me. Mick is just a great source to share information. He loves all the information you bring to him. He can't get enough. He loves sharing it with everybody. He's very benevolent with his information. He, he can't help enough people. Mick is a lifelong student of real estate. He goes to the seminars, invests his money to attend, and he applies what he learns by taking action. One of the things that you said to Ruth has made a big change in my life. That is, you told Ruth that the first thing when you wake up in the morning is to count your blessing. And I think that has changed my life so much. You changed my mindset. And you're not only a men mentor in real estate, you're become the mentor for life. You've been a, a great friend and I really appreciate everything you've done. Mick. I'm happy to have you as my mentor, and I'm very proud to have you as my friend. Congratulations. Not only have you taught me to become a good landlord and really build wealth, but uh, you've taught my kids. I've taught my kids what you taught me, and can't thank you enough. Mick Blackwell, I gotta tell you, really is a living legend and the logical recipient of the award. Mick, you deserve to be honored, and many, many more honors because of your benevolence and your kindness to so many people. I feel like you're very deserving of this award. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mick. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank you again. And I thank you one more time. The Norris Group would like to thank its gold sponsors for supporting I Survived Real Estate. Auction.com. Coachella Valley Real Estate Investors Association, Coldwell Banker Town & Country, Elite Auctions, In a Day Development, Inland Valley Association of Realtors, Jennifer Buys Houses, Keller Williams Corona, Keystone CPA, Las Brisas Escrow, LA Green Designs, LA South Ria, New Western, North San Diego Real Estate Investors, Northern California Real Estate Investors Association, Orange County Investment Club, Orange County Building Industry Association, Pacific Premier Bank, Pasadena Phoebe, Pilot Limousine, Real Wealth Network, Realty 411 Magazine, Realty Executives Inland Empire, Rick and Leanne Rossiter, Sonoka Corporation, South Orange County Real Estate Club, Spinnaker Loans, you direct IRA services, Weston South Coast Plaza, Chase Photography, Wholesale Capital Corporation, Wilson Investment Properties, Inc. For more information on hard money loans and upcoming events with the Norris Group, check out thenorrisgroup.com. For information on passive investing with trust deeds, visit tngtrustdeeds.com.